the stuff that we we are more familiar with later, not only the Whitmer kidnapping, but January 6th, all of that had its roots in the aftermath of 9-11. If you went back in time to, let's say, 2002 and 2003 and said this is the kind of thing that is and will happen, you would be regarded in Republican circles as a complete lunatic, like make Alex Jones look tame. And yet now this is very much an awareness within the mainstream of conservatism and the Republican Party. How do you think the Republican Party and conservatism in general have moved so far as to recognize that not only is this a theoretical threat, but a thing that is actually happening all the time in these United States? Well, I mean, the reason the conservatives have realized this is because they became the targets. I mean, yeah, think yeah. of the bitterness of the irony, right? The very people who supported the Patriot Act, of the Patriot Act supported the expansion of these surveillance powers uh, to go after terrorists, find to their incredulity that they are being called terrorists. They are being likened to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. So there's initially a sputtering sense of disbelief. In fact, initially, there's got to be a sort of you're kidding, right, type right. of response. And then you realize that they are not kidding uh, and that they have actually shifted their priorities uh, and you are in their sights. And then you realize, wait a minute. I mean, this is not what these powers were given to the government to do. Something has gone terribly wrong here, even though, as you know, uh, there were a few people, not, not that many, uh, even at the beginning, people like Ron Paul, who did warn that these powers not only could, but would be abused. And they turned out to be quite right. So you uh, were advisor to the Reagan administration, and one of the big kind of myths, I don't mean in the sense that it's false, but just talking points of conservatism is, you know, Reagan and Tip O'Neill would kind of hash it out during the day, but they could still shake hands and have a round of golf in the afternoon. I think now conservatives understand that this kind of vision of we're going to shake hands and work with the Democrats is completely out the window. And if anything, we're going to shake hands and work against the people. When the parties work together, it tends to be things like the Patriot Act or just massive bailouts of the banks and so on and so forth. Um, do you think that the Democratic Party has moved in a more authoritarian direction? And, or do you think this Reagan Tip O'Neill thing was always untrue? Well, let's be clear what we mean by the Reagan Tip O'Neill thing, because I, I don't think it means that uh, Republicans and Democrats could sort of resolve their differences, find a middle ground, shake hands on a deal. It was rather the belief that, look, we are fighting quite bitterly on the Hill and in policy matters over tax rates, over um, regulation, over unions, uh, even over foreign policy. But at the same time, we do recognize that there is something bigger that does unite us. And that is we are Americans. We face certain common threats as Americans. So the arguments, even if better, are arguments in the end between friends. I think this is a critical difference between then and now. Uh, I don't think it's easy to see our political opponents, and this is re reciprocal, they don't either, yeah. as friends at all. In fact, we think that they are trying to destroy the America that we cherish. Uh, and and uh, and the feeling is mutual. So this is a, a c clearly a new phase. I think the second thing is that there's a widespread belief, which I share among Republicans and conservatives, that the Democratic Party has become completely gangsterized, not only in the sense of in engaging in types of corruption. I mean, just compare Clinton, uh, Obama, and the Bidens on the one hand with, let's say, JFK, uh, Truman, and Carter on the other. I mean, the idea that Jimmy Carter would be systematically collecting bribes from foreign countries and using them, funneling them through Rosalind Carter, Billy Carter, money, one LLC going to, this is unthinkable. Um, it was as unthinkable for uh, Carter as it was for Reagan, as it was for Bush. I mean, no one suspected or thought that those people went to the presidency to make money. But with the Clintons, yeah, for sure. With the Obamas, a little motives, motives a little more complex, but yeah, and under Biden, for sure. So uh, not only have Democrats become corrupted and gangsterized, but I think they've become much more comfortable with brazen lying. They will put out false narratives fully knowing that they're false. 
Um, and they also are willing to trample on civil liberties to a degree that, quite honestly, I have found quite chilling. Uh, I did not expect uh, even the left to uh, to go to this extreme. 